The Nintendo Switch is almost five years old, and in that time, it's managed to sell over 90 million consoles. To put that in a perspective, it's Nintendo's second best-selling console of all time, just trailing the Wii. And it's looking like the Switch will not only pass the Wii, but will also pass the PlayStation 4 in total sales. So games on the Switch? Yeah, they sell pretty well. Indie games like Steam World Dig 2 have sold three times more on Switch than on Steam. And yet, despite all of that, there's still a plethora of games that are nowhere to be seen on the Switch, despite so many of us Nintendo Switch players screaming down the empty halls of Nintendo headquarters, begging for these games to find their way to the console. I even reached out to Twitter and asked you guys what games you would like to see come to the Switch. I only tweeted that a couple hours ago and instantly I knew that I had to make this video. Last time I did this, I tweeted out asking what improvements you would like to see done to the Switch, and Twitter themselves actually pinned that post to the front page of Twitter, and that's when I made that video, and here we are, just a couple months out from a brand new Switch that is actually adding a ton of things that we put in that first video I did. Now, it might be a coincidence, or maybe the fact that everyone was so engaged on that video actually saw Nintendo implement some of those changes into the new OLED console. Now, that could be true, but there's only one way to find out. Let's try again. So if you want any of the games that I talk about today to come to Switch, hit like on the video, comment down below with which of the games you do really want to see, share the video, and of course, subscribe, because so many of you watch my videos and don't do that. But there's two that I want to honorable mention before we get started. <laughs> and this is huge. Mass Effect Trilogy. Not enough people were tweeting this at me, probably because we just had a Mass Effect Trilogy remaster released on consoles and PC, and maybe a lot of people are satisfied with that, but I'm not! I haven't played those, and I want them portable. To this day, I still haven't seen a trilogy to this magnitude have your save file carry over from the first game all the way to the third, with your choices affecting the progression and the outcome of all the games. Not to mention that they are incredibly fun and in-depth RPGs that have you exploring multiple planets and fleshing out a huge cast of quirky and unique characters. Oh, and of course, the space-shooting bang-bang gameplay is pretty fun too. <laughs> it doesn't have to be the remastered trilogy even. I'll take ports of the original games. That's fine. Weirdly, there were people asking for Warzone. I say it's weird because no. As someone who plays the game on PC, it's a mess. That's fun to play, but there's no way they could figure out cramming that 150 gig beast onto the console. It's just not happening. It does make sense though, a free battle royale shooter game on the Switch. I mean, we have Fortnite, we have Apex, but I mean, even look at Apex. Oh, it's a little rough. But I mention this because I do agree that some kind of Call of Duty should come to Switch. And not necessarily because I have any interest in playing it, but because Call of Duty, love it or hate it, is one of the largest gaming franchises in the world. And we've had a ton of Call of Duty games released on Nintendo's consoles before, from the DS to the Wii. And one thing the Switch really is lacking in is first-person shooters. And again, it's not for me at all. If a million more little grubby kids want to get their hands on Switch because they can play Call of Duty now, Fine. It all adds to the Switch's success and its sales, and it all in some way trickles down and leads to me finally getting Bayonetta 3. Bring all the Call of Duties over. I won't play them, but it's probably a good idea. Unlike literally every other game in this list, this next game we were promised over a year ago, and it's been nowhere to be seen. Genshin Impact! Ah! Hey, hey! It just stepped on me! Well, maybe if you weren't lying on the floor every time I was trying to make a YouTube video, I wouldn't keep stepping on you, and are you even listening to me? Huh? Well, no. See, my Raycon? They're noise isolating, so I can barely hear what you're saying over Dually. I have Foo Fighters. I'm listening to Foo Fighters. Oh, sweet. Can I get a pair of those Raycons? Sure. Nah. You can get your own pair by going to buyraycon.com forward slash beat-em-ups to get 15%. To get 15% off, yeah. yeah. Raycons are stylish, they sound great, and somehow start at half the price of other premium audio brands. 
They have a 32 hour battery life. They come with a bunch of different sized gel tips to fit whatever kind of ear hole you have. And they're super comfortable. I take mine on a walk every single day, but I also use them in my home gym and when I'm just tidying up around the house. They don't fall out of your head no matter what you do, so they're perfect for just about everything. Look, I know most of you have Raycons already. It's 2021, who doesn't? But if you somehow still haven't clicked the link in the description or gone to buyraycon.com forward slash beat'em-ups and claimed 15% off a pair of Raycons, please consider doing so as it really helps support my channel and Raycon sponsors me every month and we want to keep them coming back. It's also completely risk-free because Raycon offers a 45-day happiness guarantee. So is this just the new thing? You lying on the floor waiting to do the sponsor read every uh, video? Until we get bored of it and start doing something different. Yeah, probably. Right, of course. Honestly, me somebody. Where was I? Oh yeah, Genshin Impact. <laughs> so initially when this game was revealed, it was revealed to be a Breath of the Wild clone. The reason why they did this is because the game was planned to be on the way for Switch. But then as the weeks and months progressed, and after I made my video calling it a clone of Breath of the Wild, which is what it looked like at the time, they started releasing a ton more trailers and a bunch of extra gameplay that really showcased that while this game was very clearly inspired by Breath of the Wild, Wild, something the creators of the game even said that they took a lot of elements from Breath of the Wild but expanded on that base in their own way. With one of the biggest differences being the combat and the gacha system of having several playable characters that you have to unlock with essentially loot crates. Suddenly the focus seemed to shift to a PC and PlayStation release and the Nintendo version kind of just disappeared. And even if you go on Wikipedia the Nintendo Switch port still just says TBA. And it's a very big shame because the game is great. When it initially released, I picked it up on PC to check it out. I even streamed it on Twitch. Visually, it is gorgeous. And the combat is very real-time action, hack and slashy beat-em-up combat. And I loved it. I was even getting into playing along with the gacha system. But at the time, knowing that a Switch port or thinking that a Switch port was on the horizon, I didn't want to invest any money into it in case there was wasn't cross-play or cross-save features and decided to put it down in the meantime because I was excited to play it portably on my Switch. It's a game that suits Switch very well and it's a game that's supposed to be coming to the platform but we have no idea when. This next one is purely for you, Twitter world, because I... The Sims. <laughs> I love The Sims, don't get me wrong. I have just never really been keen on playing The Sims on a console, but it's not totally undoable. We had The Sims games being released on GameCube, and to be fair, I played the heck out of some GameCube Sims. And with games like Animal Crossing so clearly doing insane numbers on the Switch, it would be crazy to think that The Sims, which is in a very similar family of genre, wouldn't also do incredibly well. Well, and since it's an EA property, and you know, one thing about EA is that they love to make money. But on the other hand, um, I'd probably get really addicted to it, so probably best off we don't do that one. The next one might be about the only one I'm confident is going to happen, and that's the Metroid Prime Trilogy. We are all desperately waiting for Metroid Prime 4 to release on the console, so in the meantime, we should be able to replay the first three games on the console. I mean, we've had the time to do it. On top of fans of the series wanting to replay the games, it's a great chance to get people caught up to speed. I have had a theory for a long time that that game the trilogy pack is ready to go and Nintendo is just timing the release once they know when the fourth game is coming out. That's just my theory, but I do think it's gonna happen. Ports of the 360 and PlayStation 3 era. The reason why I did this is because we could go down this avenue for videos and videos and videos. It would literally never end. But just to mention a few, and you can let me know yours down below, the Batman Arkham series was heavily tweeted at me in that post, and I agree, those games would be perfect on Switch. But if I could squeeze a suggestion in, I just made my No More Heroes 3 video, and I was talking about Lollipop Chainsaw and Shadows of the Damned, and I feel like those fast-paced hack-and-slash and 
third person shooter games with tons of personality and color would just suit the Switch so well. I could go on and on and on about games in that era. So just leave them down below and we'll talk. Um... Fallout. I think the only thing Skyrim hasn't been ported to at this point is toasters. Like, it's everywhere, even the Switch. We even had the weird Skyrim spin-off mobile game on Switch. On top of that, Bethesda went out of their way to port Doom to the console. And yet their other largest franchise, Fallout, has been nowhere to be seen. Having a game like Skyrim on Switch tells us that Fallout 4, their recent Fallout game, not counting Fallout 76, which we won't, Fallout 4 could probably Probably, I would say definitely run on the console just fine. But even if you want to come up with some reason why not, you still have a plethora of Fallout games you could bring over. New Vegas is the one that everyone would want. It's situations like that that I really don't understand. Because it really is as easy as... And then... I think right now, one of the biggest, newest, hottest releases that I am baffled that didn't come to the Switch, Death's Door. Reason being, it looks like such the perfect Switch game. I am so confident that at some point, this bad boy has to get ported to the Switch. So I'm holding out on playing it until I can get my hands on the portable version of it. As someone who just put Hades into their top 10 games of all time, you can see why I can't wait to get my hands on this one, and I'm about to break down at any minute and just play it on Hex. Xbox. Oh, I, I'm sorry. Did did someone just say Xbox? Game Pass. I think the time for this to have happened has come and gone, but for the longest time, it looked like Xbox might be bringing a lot of their services, including Game Pass, to the Switch. For a while there, Xbox real and I guess still, were really trying to push themselves as more of a game service than a game console. Essentially trying to move away from people needing to have an Xbox to play their games. Mostly because, well, the Xbox One didn't sell very well and they realized that with Game Pass they could still make a lot of money off of their software. So about two years ago when the Switch was blowing up and everyone realized it was the new hotness, Xbox started actually putting a lot of their games on the console, like we saw both Ori's launching on Switch. It didn't seem too unlikely that they might take their Game Pass service and put it somewhere else, like the Switch. Now there's a lot of games on Game Pass that obviously wouldn't play on the Switch, like Gears of War 5 for example. It would be a selection of Game Pass's titles that would play on the Switch and work well on the Switch. I still don't think this would be a bad idea, but the Xbox Series X has actually sold incredibly well. In fact, it was their best-selling console at launch of all time. Now with Halo releasing on the console at Christmas, I don't know if it's such a good idea anymore for Xbox to take that service and put it on a console that's already sold almost 100 million units. So this one is probably probably the most unlikely at this point. However, money talks, I guess. I'm pretty sure everyone knows what I'm about to say. GTA 5, or really any GTA games. If you don't know what this is, I made a whole video about it. But when I got my really beastie a and &E the first thing I did was download and finish GTA 5. And it was amazing. So I still don't know why they never made the effort to port it to Switch. Rockstar have even made the effort to port GTA to everything else other than Switch. Even the current generation of consoles just released. They're actually making a ton of money from the online part of GTA 2. I gotta imagine bringing that portable and putting the online in players' hands while they're on the toilet would just encourage even more microtransactions and sales for them. There is actually a really strong rumor right now that Rockstar are remaking the three PlayStation 2 GTA games, and they're gonna be bringing those to Switch as well as other platforms. So we might actually finally get some sort of GTA on Switch. And speaking of Rockstar, I mean, we could go down the list of all of their games. Why not bring Bully to the Switch? Or of course, my favorite, Red Dead Redemption. I know I could go and play them on Xbox in 4K. Look around. Does it look like I can? <laughs> Zelda. The main one being Wind Waker. I mean, Wind Waker and the Switch, they just have the same bubbly light personality and seem to just go hand in hand with each other. But really, you could do any or all of the Zelda ports. I mean, we're talking the Zelda 3DS remakes of Ocarina and Majora's Mask. Take the Wind Waker and Twilight Princess HD from the Wii U, bundle those and sell them on the console. You already have Skyward Sword HD now, so that would make a complete little family. The Twitter 
players were filled with people wanting old school Pokemon games, people wanting F-Zeros and your mothers. A massive virtual console umbrella in general would be really cool, but I still have hesitations with releasing full virtual console to players on a system. I personally feel like that's what did the Wii U win, because the only reason anyone bought a Wii U was for virtual console, and that was great to make Nintendo a little bit of extra scratch, but it hurt literally everything else. It hurt the economy of the console, it hurt the indies, it hurt the big budget titles, it hurt the third party developers, it hurt the people investing on making ports for the console. People were literally only investing in buying virtual console games. And I have a massive argument that the indie scene is what has helped the Switch succeed. I do agree that Nintendo should bring back a lot of these games, but I think sparingly is the right choice. This is the one that gave me the whole idea for this video. It's the reason why I sent that tweet out in the first place, because I've been playing this game a lot over the last year or so, and I don't understand why. It's not on Switch. Pokemon Online, the card game. We have all these free games on Switch that do well, but the free card games that are really popular online, games like Hearthstone, haven't found their way to Switch. How? The fact that Hearthstone isn't on Switch has always bugged me, but honestly, I've moved on from that game, and I moved into the Pokemon Online game because it's not an insane grind. If you don't know, I've been buying just a ton of Pokemon cards and unboxing them on Twitch. It was Kim and I, we had a fantastic time with everyone. And then in each pack, you get a code card, you scan that into your Pokemon Online game, and you get a free pack of cards in the game that you can open or trade for other cards. Back to my point, it's Pokemon. This is a game that easily could be given touch controls and put on the system and you'd have a free to play Pokemon game on the console. My favorite thing about the online Pokemon game is that there's no microtransactions, so you can let kids play it and there's literally no way they can use your credit card and spend money. It's all free. The only way you can spend money is, as I said, buying real life Pokemon cards and getting the code cards. So if Nintendo and the Pokemon company decided to put this app onto the Switch, it would encourage people to go out and buy the cards from the card games, which again benefits the Pokemon company and helps grow the franchise even more than it already is the number one franchise in the world. Then I could battle my little Pokemons in bed rather than having to sit at the computer and get a bad back every time. I mean, I hate to keep beating a dead horse. They've released Persona Strikers, which is a sequel story-wise, not gameplay-wise, from this game. And yet people that haven't played it or can't play it because they don't have a PlayStation don't really understand what's going on. I mean, the way the game plays, the visuals, the way the game is built, it's perfect for the Switch. Lo-fi, sitting by the window while it's raining outside vibe of a game. So to have it handheld and sit in your bed or your couch, it just makes so much sense. The only thing I can assume why this game hasn't yet been ported to the Switch even longer than we've been waiting for Metroid Prime 4, we've been waiting for Shin Megami Tensei 5. That was revealed early 2017. It's by far the longest running game that we've been waiting for to release on Switch. And I'm not even sure how they tie in together. The comment section will probably let me know. I believe Shin Megami Tensei was first and then Persona ended up being a spin-off series, which I think, don't hate me fans, garnered more popularity somewhere down the line and became the bigger franchise, I feel like that if they were to start releasing Persona 5, 4, 3, it might take wind out of the sails of this up-and-coming Shin Megami game that everyone has been waiting for for five years, so it can do as well as possible. I am hopeful that once SMT5 releases and it does well, we can start seeing the Persona series migrate over to the console as well. I know there's more. You can leave them down below. <laughs> Just go nuts, go insane, blow up the comments. I mean, I talked about Lollipop Chainsaw, like how random. But yeah, if you want any of these games to actually come to the console, hey, maybe we can make it happen again. I mean, that last video got like over a million views. I really do think it had an impact. I'd love to have that happen again. It's as easy as liking the video and helping it get shared out in the algorithms. But if you haven't subscribed, or commented down below, do that. And then the final thing, which is huge, share the video. I, I never asked for that. It's a weird thing to ask for, but it might help you get your favorite game on the console. Even if it's a tweet or a Facebook post. Does anyone still use Facebook?